Hello everyone, welcome to the session of Amazon CloudWatch. In this session, we'll get a high level understanding of what is Amazon CloudWatch and we'll also do a demo how to remotely monitor logs in CloudWatch. So before starting the session, a brief introduction about myself. My name is Rahat Verma. I'm an intern at Ethnos Training Delivery AWS. I'm 3x AWS certified and a Vitrix certified engineer. So the agenda of the session is to get an overview of Amazon CloudWatch. We learn Amazon components, we learn its benefits, use cases and features. And we'll also do a demo how to remotely monitor CloudWatch logs. So what is Amazon CloudWatch? Amazon CloudWatch is a monitoring and observability service built for DevOps engineers, developers, SREs, IT managers and product owners. So CloudWatch provides us with data and actionable insights to monitor our application. It also helps us to optimize resource utilization. CloudWatch collects monitoring and operational data in the form of logs, metrics, and events. So we get a unified view of our operational health and gain complete visibility of our AWS sources, applications, and services running on AWS and on-premises. We can also use CloudWatch to detect anonymous behavior in our environments. We use it to set alarms. We use it to visualize logs and metrics side by side. We can take automated actions, troubleshoot issues, and discover insights to keep our application running smoothly. So how CloudWatch works? So in CloudWatch, you can collect, monitor, act, and analyze. There is application monitoring, there is system-wide visibility, there is resource optimization, and there is unified operational health. So as I said, CloudWatch collects monitoring and operational data in the form of logs, metrics, and events, and it visualizes it used using the automated dashboards so we can get a unified view of our AWS sources, application, and services running on AWS or on on-premises. We can also visualize the experience of our application end users and validate design choices through experimentation. We can create alarms based on metric threshold values that we specify. We can also deep dive and analyze our metrics, logs, and traces to better understand how to improve application performance. So these are some benefits of using Amazon CloudWatch. So first is collect metrics from AWS and on-prem. So monitoring our AWS resources and applications is easy with CloudWatch. It integrates with more than 70 AWS services like EC2, EKS, ECS, Lambda, DynamoDB, Amazon S3. So it automatically publishes detailed one minute metrics and we can also use custom metrics up to one second. And we can also deep dive into our logs for additional context. Second is to use a single platform for observability. So modern applications such as those running on microservices architecture generate large volumes of data in the form of metrics, logs, and events. So the CloudWatch is a good monitoring tool for that. Third is we can get operational visibility and insights. So to optimize the performance and resource utilization, we need, we need a unified operational view. We need real-time granular data and historical reference. So with CloudWatch, it provides us automatic dashboards, data with one second granularity, and up to 15 months of metric storage and retention. The last is derive actionable insights from logs. So we can explore, analyze, and visualize our logs, so we can troubleshoot operational problems with ease. Using CloudWatch Insights, we can pay only for the queries we run. It scales with our log volume and query complexity, giving us the answers in seconds. So these are some use cases of CloudWatch. Number one is monitor and troubleshoot infrastructure. So we can monitor key metrics, we can visualize our application and infrastructure stack, we can create alarms, we can correlate data to understand and resolve the root cause of the performance issue in our application or AWS services. Second is improve mean time to resolution. So we can correlate, visualize, and analyze metrics and logs so we can resolve issues quickly. We can combine them with trace data from AWS X-Ray for full observability. Number three is monitor applications. So we can monitor our end user's digital experience and our applications that run on AWS. It can be on EC2 servers, it can be on containers, or it can be serverless. And it also can be on on-prem servers. CloudWatch collects the data at every layer of the performance stack from our front end to our infrastructure. The last is use observability analytics. So we can analyze millions of operation logs and metrics in real real time to identify trends and patterns in our application performance. And we can use these insights to reduce MTTTR mean time to resolution. 
So these are some features of CloudWatch. So first is you can easily collect and store logs. The CloudWatch log service allows you to collect and store logs from our resources, application and servers in near real time. So the main categories are vendor logs, custom logs and logs published by AWS. Second is collect aggregate infrastructure and application metrics. So CloudWatch allows us to collect infrastructure metrics from more than 70 AWS services such as EC2, DynamoDB, S3, ECS, Lambda, Amazon API Gateway, etc. We can stream metrics. So CloudWatch metric streams enables us to create continuous near real-time streams of our metrics to the destination of our choice. This makes easier to send CloudWatch metrics to popular third-party service providers using an Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose HTTP endpoint. Next is we get unified operational view with dashboards. So CloudWatch dashboards enables us to create reusable graphs and visualize our cloud resources and applications in a unified view. We can graph metrics and log data side by side in a single dashboard to quickly get a context and move from diagnosing the problem to understanding the root cause. Next is composite alarms. So with CloudWatch composite alarms, we can combine multiple alarms and reduce the alarm noise. If the issue affects several resources in an application, we will receive a single alarm notification for the entire application instead of one or for each affected resource. Next is Application Insight. So CloudWatch Application Insight provides automated setup for observability for our applications so we can get uh, visibility into their health. It helps us to identify and set up key metrics and log across our application resources and technology stacks such as databases, operating system, load balancers and queues. Next is Custom Operation Metrics on CloudWatch. So CloudWatch metric math enables to perform calculation across multiple metrics for real-time analysis so we can easily derive insights from our existing CloudWatch metrics and better understand the operational health and performance of our infrastructure. The last is Log Analytics. So Amazon Cloud, CloudWatch Logs Insights enables you to derive actionable intelligence from our logs to address operational issues without needing to provision the servers or manage softwares. We can instantly begin with writing our queries with aggregations, filters, and regular expressions. So this was a high level overview of Amazon CloudWatch. Now we'll move to demo and we'll learn how to remotely monitor CloudWatch logs. So welcome to the demo of this session. So in this demo, we'll learn how to remotely monitor CloudWatch logs. So as you can see, I'm in my account. I'm in AWS Management Console. I'm using the North Virginia region for this lab. And first of all, we have to deploy a CloudFormation stack. So we'll go to CloudFormation. So here we will now create a cloud formation stack. So the stack will create, it will create a lab VPC, it will create a EC2 instance, it will create IAM roles and S3 bucket. So we will click create stack with the new resources standard. In this we will upload a template. So this is the template security lab stack. We we'll click on next. So the name will be security. CW lab. The display name will be Rahat. I'm writing my name here. And we have to set a bucket name so we'll set a unique bucket name we'll write here three three four four three three and the date of today is
11th May. So I'm writing this bucket name. So you can choose the bucket name as you want, but I'm writing this bucket name. So we have configured the displayed name. We have configured, configured the bucket name. We also wrote the stack name here. So we have to go on next. So we don't have to change anything here. Go on next. Here we have to check this. I acknowledge that in cloud formation might create IAM resources. Now just create stack. So now our stack will be created. So it will take around one to two minutes to create a stack. So the description is testing a base testing a basic cloud formation template. So our stack creation is now complete. Now we have to install a CloudWatt agent. So CloudWatt agent monitors activities on our H2 instance to collect logs and metrics. So we'll go to System Managers console. We'll choose run command. Now oh, here we'll search document name equals AWS configure AWS package As you can see, it uh, it appears the owner is Amazon. The platform type is Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So this command allows us to install packages on EC2 instances without directly accessing the instance. So the CloudWatch agent package will be uh, one of these package. So we'll select it. We'll go to under command parameters. The action is install. Installation type is uninstall and reinstall. The name field will write Amazon CloudWatch agent. In the version field, we'll write latest. We don't have to modify this arguments field. Now in the targets, we have to choose the instance manually. So we only have a one instance created. This one security lab, a security CW lab instance. So we'll choose this. So there is a policy document as Amazon SSM Managed Instance Core attached, attached to the IAM role. So it will allow system managers to perform operations on the instance. So in the outputs, we should deselect the enable S3 bucket. And now we'll run the command. So it says the commands were successfully sent. So command status is overall set in progress. So the command status is now success. Now we'll store the CloudWatch config file in the parameter store. 
so in here only you can see under application management there is a parameter store we click on this we'll click create parameter so we'll write a name amazon cloud watch security lab CW config so this is our name Amazon CloudWatch security lab CW config description is optional We'll set the tier to standard, type to string, and data type to text. So in the data type value, we choose the text and the value I have added a cloud for CloudWatch configuration file. So this is the file I have just added. So we'll choose create parameter. So create parameter request succeeded. So we have a parameter now. So now we have to this we have to start the CloudWatch agent. So CloudWatch agent is installed in our EC2 instance. We need to load the configuration file and restart the CloudWatch agent in order to be begin collecting logs. So we'll go to node, node management and run command. We'll type the uh, we'll run command here. Type the name document name equals AT prefix equals and we'll enter Amazon CloudWatch. Manage agent. Where is the Amazon CloudWatch Manage Agent? We'll select this. We'll come to Command Parameters, Action to Configure, Mode to EC2, Optional Configuration Service to the SSM. So in the Optional Configure Location, so we have to set the uh, parameter we created earlier in the parameter, st uh, parameter store. So we have to write the name here. Amazon CloudWatch. Security lab CV CW config. Security lab CW config. So I have, we have to write this under the optional configure location. This is the one we created in the parameter store. So the optional restart is yes. Now we have to choose the instance manually. So we'll choose the instance or instance that is the security CW lab instance. We'll choose this. In the output section, we have to deselect, deselect this enable S3 bucket and we have to run command. So our command was successfully sent and the status is in, in progress. So our status is in success now. So now we have to generate the logs. So we'll go back to cloud formation.
we'll select the security CW lab. We'll go to outputs and we'll copy this website URL. Paste it in a new tab. And this is our sample uh, web server. We will close it. Now we'll go to the CloudWatch to view our logs. So type CloudWatch here. So now we are in the CloudWatch console. So under the logs, we have to expand it and we'll set log groups. So here are the security lab logs, we'll click it. So here we can see the Apache SS logs, the CW agent logs, the YUM logs, the instant boot logs, SSH logs, Apache error logs. So we'll view the Apache SS logs. So these are the records of our logs. So we can see the records here. So we'll go back. We'll choose the CW agent one. So these are the law these are the record of the logs so we can view the we can view every record of these logs by clicking on them now what we have to do is we have to export the logs to the s3 so why we have to like store the logs in s3 because it is more cost effective and reliable than storing it on cloudwatch so S3 is a good option for long term storage and archival of log files. So we'll go to log groups. We'll select it in the actions tab. There is export data to S3. We'll click on it. So in the from field, I'll write the date of today. So today is May 11th. And in to, to field, I will write the date of tomorrow. So that is May 12th. So I'm writing this because this is the latest uh, creation of creation date of logs we want to export. So stream prefix will be optional. So we have, I have to write this, uh, S3 bucket name. This was my S3 bucket. WA lab 3344433111. And we'll click to export. So here our export task is created now. So in the bucket name, you have to write the right bucket name you, you earlier created. And in the S3 bucket prefix, you have to write lab logs there. There was an error in the bucket name, that's why I was facing that error. Now it's fine. Now we'll view the export task. And as you can see, the status is completed successfully. Creation time one minute ago. Now we'll go to Amazon S3 to view it. So this was the bucket and here you can see there is a folder named lab logs. There is AWS log write test. So we have successfully upload, exported our logs to S3. Now we have to query logs from S3 using Amazon Athena. So and, uh, Athena is a serverless interactive query service. So we can run SQL queries on this. We can uh, use SQL queries on our log files and to extract the information from them. So we'll open the Athena console.
So we are on the Athena console. We will click on this, expand it, and we'll go to query data. So first of all, we have to set the query result location field because it's, this is our first time in uh, Athena. So we'll go to settings. There is the query result location and encryption. We'll manage. So under the location of query result, we have to write S3, our bucket name. S3, our bucket name was WA lab. 334433 11 and then we have to write Athena queries so in the location of the query result we have to write this So in the inspected bucket owner, we have just have to write our account ID. So here is my account ID. And we'll click save. So the settings are successfully updated. Now we'll go to editor. So here we can see a blank query data. So in the query one, we have to write a command here. So we have to write this command here. It is create database security lab logs. So in the query one, you have to write this command and just press run so the running is completed and now you can see a security lab logs database here so we have to create the tables within this database to hold our logs so we'll click the plus icon here and we'll write a query query to here So this is the query too, I just uh, copied it. So this is the query and in here I will, there is a location, there is a replace me bucket. So I will write here my S3 bucket name and the string, I will use the S3 bucket string. So I'll write here S3 bucket name. Mine was wa lab 3344331. And for the replay, uh, the string, I will go to S3 console. Here is my bucket. I will open the lab logs folder. So in the instructions, it, it says that we have to replace the string here in the Athena, this one. So I have written the name here, lab logs. So I have to uh, write here and replace what is written in the lab log folder. So in my case, in the lab log folder, when I open the lab log folder, it is written AWS logs write test. So I will copy, I have to copy this and I paste this here. So this is the command now, location is S3, the bucket, lab logs, the string, then Apache SS logs, and just have to click run. So after clicking run, I will I saw a table here. So you will also see a table here when you click run. So now we have to run another query. 
So we'll click on this query three. So now I will run another query here. This is the query select star from security lab logs, security lab Apache access logs, limit is 15. So I'll run this. As you can see, this query is running now. So the, the name was security labs logs. It was not lab, so it was security labs logs. That was, was giving that error. So we'll run again. So I have like entered the name. I will enter the name again, labs, and I will run again. As you can see now, running is completed. So our all queries were successful now. We have run the queries and this is a table here. As you can see, this is a security lab of HSS logs. These are the logs. And now we have to create a quick site visualization. So we'll go to quick site. And now I have to sign up for this quick site. So I choose the standard one. The region is yes, US East one, North Virginia. We will make sure this is checked. We need, we need the Amazon and yeah, Amazon Hina is checked. We also need the Amazon S3 also and we'll take the lab one. Here we'll enter our name. So my name is Rahat. So I'll enter this and my email is this one. So I'll enter this also. So these are the settings here. Authentication methods I am federated. So this is the default one. I have not changed that. The region is this, the name is this, notification email is this. Amazon Athena is checked. We'll select the buckets, this one. And we'll also select the right permission for Athena work group. And now we'll click finish. So it is now creating my quick site account. So my quick site account is quick site account is created. Now I'll go to Amazon Quick Site. So here we'll go to new analysis. New data set. Here 
here we will choose Athena and we will write the name of the data source we will write security labs log data create a data source we will select our cot lab logs and will the tables will be our apache logs so we will select it we will write directly query to our data and we will click visualize So this is the screen now and now we'll create a bar graph showing frequency of responses types by day so we'll click the vertical bar we'll click the vertical stack bar chart this one we will click the this one vertical bar chart we'll add a dimension here so now we have to add the dimensions here so from here I will just drag and drop it so for the x axis I'll go with the request date For the value, I'll go with response code. And group color also to response code. So my graph is done, so I am not seeing any data here, but the, this is the way of doing the graph. Now we'll publish it because I don't have the contents in the table, so that's why I'm not able to see the graph. So now we can publish also the graph into the quick site dashboard. So we'll go to share, publish dashboard. I will name it also, we'll name it security. lab cw apache responses and we will click publish dashboard so as you can see our dashboard is published now so here will be the data it will be a one graph only it will only show the data you put it in so that's the benefit of quick site so we built out the quick site visualization to display the responses generated by hits on our website Now we will sign out the quick site. So the lab is done now. So in this lab, we learned how to monitor the CloudWatch logs remotely. So we first deployed a CloudFormation template which was uh, containing the EC2 web servers, S3 bucket, and network infrastructure of our lab. Then we installed a CloudWatch agent. We started the CloudWatch agent using the system manager run command. We also stored some ins, we also used the parameter store. 
we viewed our logs in the cloudwatch logs uh, we also exported our logs to the s3 bucket we used athena for query and we used the quick sight for the visualization dashboard so now we have to do the lab cleanup so i'm here on the quick sight again to for the lab cleanup so i'll click on this and delete it So now I'll go to the data sets and here I'll delete this data set. Delete data set. So our now data set is deleted. Here is a dashboard, I'll delete the dashboard as well. So the dashboard is also deleted. Now I'll sign out my account. I have come back to the AWS console. So I've logged into my AWS account again. Now what I'll do is I'll go to Athena. Here I am in Amazon Athena. So here I'll delete this table. I'll write the name here, I'll write it. So yes, now our table is also deleted. Now we'll write a new query here. Let's return drop table security and now we'll run again. So this failed because our name is not lab, it's labs. So we'll run it. So as you can see, there is no such table now because our table is deleted. So our table is successfully deleted. Now we'll go to the systems manager stored parameters. We'll go to systems manager. We'll click on parameter store. Here we'll click the box here, the Amazon Cloudware Security Lab CW config, and we'll delete the parameter. Now the parameter successfully deleted. Now we'll go to S3 and we'll delete our bucket. Go to S3. Here click on the bucket we just created. And press delete.
okay it says the bucket is not empty so first of all we have to delete the contents here okay so we'll delete the objects it permanently delete and now our objects are deleted now so so we can delete the bucket as well so we'll go to buckets and we'll delete the bucket we'll write w a lap Three three four four three three level, and now we have successfully deleted the bucket. Now once we'll go back to Athena. Here you can see there is no database here, but uh, there is no tables here, but there is a database. So what we'll do is there is a query written here add by default and we'll run it so this query failed because we have deleted the bucket so the database is already deleted we'll go to cloud formation to delete our stack we'll select this stack we'll delete it and our stack is deleting so this was the cleanup of the lab so make sure to when you do the lab you create the resources and make sure to delete it because if you are not in free tier you will be billed so this lab is complete now so we create deployed a cloud formation template we installed a cloud word agent we run the cloud word agent we used athena and we used quicksight so thank you for joining this session i hope you learned about cloud watch and how to remotely monitor logs